I guess I'm still learning how to deal with microaggressions with mental illness and being um, a black woman. It's something that I've always had. The majority of the microaggressions that I've experienced in my life are related to um, being half Japanese. People often say that I am pretty for a black girl, for example. Oh my god, Kiana, like, I'm, I'm, I'm blacker than you are, Kiana. Like, oh my god. From your name, I thought you'd be a little Jap walking off the streets. Oh, you're super pretty for a black girl. You know, a lot of people, they want to, like, touch hair. It's one of the actions where they're just like, oh, can I see your hair? And they just go and, like, pet it. When you pet something, you know, you pet animals. You know, like, we're humans. We're not, we're not animals. The, the biggest one I get all the time is, what are you? What are you? Um, and then they rattle off, because I'm so ethnically ambiguous, they rattle off this list of like, oh, are you Mexican? Native American? Um, Puerto Rican? Yada, 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 yada. Um, why do you need to know that? I don't, think it, it don't, I don't think it necessarily changes my my intelligence or anything like that. It's just that you can put me in a nice little box. It's, it's disheartening to have people tell you you don't look like a particular group of people that you self-identify with. Um, it's hard because I do self-identify as a Hispanic. I was born in Chile in South America. Um, I feel like, how Chilean can I, can I get? <laughs> you know, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> so, but then I try to model correct behavior. So if somebody says, where are you from? I will say, well, I grew up in California, but if you're talking about my ancestry, um, I'm Korean. I have definitely experienced microaggressions the way that I look whether it's um, like body type especially, um, I think that that's maybe one of the hardest. I think it's a reality of privilege that you don't have to notice microaggressions. What gives me a sense of agency to address microaggressions is honestly the identities that I have that are privileged. I think sometimes when a microaggression is done to me or others, I'm pretty quick to um, respond back or to clap back. Um, but I often think sometimes that's hard to do. There are those times where you know you want to educate that person, and there are those times where you, you just want to run away, but then there's some times where you just have to have a good laugh. I wasn't strong enough to say, like, what the heck? Like, wh what was, like, why did you say that? I wasn't strong enough to say that, and so I just had to, like, internalize my, my hurt and then kind of move on. A lot of times, I don't think that people are trying to, um, what would you say, send microaggressions on purpose. I think that a lot of times microaggressions are, you're just not educated on what, uh, what needs to be said or what, what you should say. I think a lot of times people really just don't understand the impact of their words or their comments or something that has become a colloquialism in regularly exchanged conversation in our culture. A lot of times microaggressions are unconscious and people don't realize the impact and a lot of times that wasn't their intent at all. Um, but at the end of the day it doesn't matter about intent because it matters about how it impacted you. Trying to help students to understand that we all have biases. They, they, we, they may not necessarily be, um, you may not necessarily know them, that know exactly what they are, but we all, I think we all have them. And um, once we can learn to understand those biases, I think that that would be an important first step to understanding other people and, and their life experiences. When I get challenged, it's hard and I feel embarrassed, and I'm somebody who thinks about that a lot, but I also um, want to honor the fact that I was the one who um, made that impact on the student. So you think about intent versus impact. I think it's hugely important not to let that microaggression just pass by without anything being said. Because being silent is, to me, as an educator, stating that you agree with that particular microaggression.